So as far as rates, you know, ALS most commonly progresses in a steady rate and fairly quickly. Um, but there's a lot of variability. So, you know, there's, there's some people who have this disease and it, it rips through their body and they only last, you know, a year. And there's other people who have it for decades. You know, Stephen Hawking is a famous person who had ALS for probably close to 60 years. There's even a small group of people whose ALS seems to reverse. I know about 48 people now around the world who look like they had ALS at one time and now have gotten either all the way better from it or, or almost all the way better. Um, but the disease is not always linear in how it progresses. So, you know, sometimes a person comes in as a slow progressor and their progression speeds up, or they come in as a fast progressor and their progression slows down. We've seen people have what we call plateaus where they don't progress, sometimes for many months or even years. And as I mentioned before, we've seen people who actually recover some lost motor function. Usually this is just a small amount and for a short period of time, but it can be quite dramatic. And then, you know, we can also talk about patterns of progression. So most commonly ALS progresses contiguously along spinal pathways, which means if you start out with foot drop on the right, the disease usually progresses up the right leg and then over to the left leg before it moves up to the right arm and then over to the left arm and eventually up into the bulbar muscles. Very rarely we can see ALS skip around and no one really understands that skipping pattern where somebody who comes in with a right foot drop, you know, next develops left hand weakness and then develops slurred speech. It's unusual and it's hard to understand how that happens. I almost never put an expiration date on my patients. You know, it's a very common question that I get asked, how long will I live with this disease? And you know, early on in the course of the disease, what I tell them is I have no idea because that's honest. I tell them, you know, there's so much variability between patients and even within patients in terms of their progression that it's impossible to know exactly how long any one person will live. And what I tell my patients is let's try to focus on today. Let's try to make you the best you can be with our multidisciplinary approach today. And then, you know, we'll try to prepare you for what we think might be coming in the next few months. But as far as predicting what might be coming in years down the road, that's impossible. It frustrates me when I hear about patients who come in early in the course of the disease and they're told by a clinician, you know, you probably have three years to live. I have no idea how, how you could scientifically determine that a person with ALS has three years to live.